I present to you, for your discernment, the visions and prophecies of Father Oliveira, a Brazilian priest who lives in Rio Grande do Sul, southern Brazil. This material comes from True Faith, a Catholic site in that country. To the best of my belief, these visions and prophecies have not been translated into English. For years, Father Oliveira has received mystical visions and prophetic revelations from God. You may be interested to know the literal meaning of Father Oliveira's surname. Oliveira means olive tree, i.e. one can find many Oliveiras in the Mount of Olives. The accounts below are about the visions he had, described in his own words. Father writes in Portuguese in a colloquial style that is simple and clear to understand. I have simplified some expressions further for clarity, but the sense of each phrase remains faithful to the original. Visions and Dreams 2003 The Dream of the Three Days of Darkness Date Undefined I can't remember exactly the date of the first time I had this dream. I'm just sure it started in 2003. I kept having this same dream for 16 years, with varying frequency either once or twice a week, sometimes complete, and in some occasions truncated when I woke up in the middle of the dream. Over the years, what varied were the people and the place where the events occurred. But the facts themselves, including the things I heard and said, were always the same. In January 2019, after I told a family member the dream, I never had it again. I hadn't told anyone about the dream until that day, because it was the day I read for the first time the alleged letters of Padre Pio about the three days of darkness. The resemblance was so close that I had no choice but to reveal what had been my experience for so many years. Description of the dream The dream always started the same way. I was standing by the door of a house, as I said over the years the place varied in appearance. I was outside looking up to the sky. At one point I saw the sun disk, reddened, but in a tone different from that of dusk or dawn. The sun was close to the horizon. There was something, like fire in the sky, with a color between bright red and blue. There were things, resembling clouds, but as I had never seen them before, they looked like fire to me. Then I saw many birds. I remember first seeing them all flying in the same direction. Then it got dark too quickly, in a manner similar to when a storm is approaching. At that moment, there was always someone close to me, the person also varied throughout the dreams, who asked the question, What is happening? My answer was always the same as well. It's starting! It felt very cold at that point. Then I saw myself already inside the house. Someone was boarding the windows, with wood, carton, blankets, etc. The materials I was using at this point also varied over the years, but the task was always the same. We were closing all the openings in the place. There were several people with me, all of whom I knew. They were helping to close windows and doors, carrying food or blankets from one side or the other. Always in this part of the dream, someone started to question everything saying things like, This is not necessary. It's an exaggeration. They've already said on television that this was going to happen, and I always ended ordering them to continue doing the work. Two details that happened every time were, looking at my reflection in the window and noticing my white hair and beard, and whenever we were almost done closing everything, some acquaintance arrived at the last minute, and great relief was felt. The dream sequence remained the same. From that point on, everything was very dark. I couldn't make out the faces of everyone in the house. The number seemed to be between 20 and 30 people. A light was turned on, always in the center. The first time I dreamed, there were candles, about five or six, large and small placed in the center of the room. At other times it was a fireplace, this was repeated a lot, but always with candles in front, or emergency lights along with candles. In the third part of the dream everyone gathered in the dark with some small light in the middle. Everyone had a rosary in hand. Someone always said at this moment that, it's too cold, and my answer was the same. It's already started, we better pray and keep silent. After that moment came the worst part of the dream. I began to hear noises like lightning and thunder. Sometimes it sounded like bombs going off, strong wind and whistling. 
Through the few cracks that remained, you could see the light flashing from these rays or bombs. It is difficult to know where the light was coming from. The fear we felt was great at that time. There was a tremor in the house through the floor and walls. The sequence continued in a disturbing way. I started to hear screams and a lot of noise outside, as if a lot of people were running through the streets. There were gunshots, things breaking, people screaming, sounds of animals such as pigs, horses and oxen. If I could describe this sound as the sound of hell, I wouldn't hesitate to call it that way. At this moment, someone always approached the window, as if wanting to spy on what was going on outside the house. I would get up and immediately say, Stay away from the windows, don't look out. The dream always ended the same way. I was gathered with some people, around a small light, locked in the house, with this hell going on outside, everyone looking at the candlelight. Sitting on a small stool, I kept saying to myself, We only have to endure three days, in three days it will pass. I never dreamed beyond this moment. Either he woke up earlier, or at that very moment. June 5th, 2015, the 27 stanzas. This was the most enigmatic phenomenon I have ever experienced. I celebrated two masses and then went home. I was alone in the parish. After showering, praying, and having dinner I sat down to get some rest. I found myself wandering through my thoughts, thanking God for the day. It was then that I entered a state of altered consciousness. I believe it was a kind of ecstasy, similar to what I had once experienced in 2006 during a retreat when Jesus told me three things that have now come to pass. I must classify the phenomenon as an inner locution. I heard a voice, which I firmly believe was angelical for the feeling was one of deep security. I couldn't discern if it was my guardian angel or another one sent by the Lord, because I didn't see his image, I just heard his voice. He asked me to write down everything he was about to say. The phenomenon seemed to last about half an hour. In the end, almost three hours passed, which left me confused by the time lapse. Below is the text of what that angel asked me to write. O prophet, read the signs of the times, and transcribe in veiled words. For only those destined for the discernment of spirits will understand their meaning and force. Therefore you, to whom I address this prophecy, show it only to those I indicate to you, so that they act neither with fear nor afraid of the truth. What am I going to order you? Note, after saying this, there was a period of silence. Then he resumed speaking and only stopped when he finished, which makes me think that the verses start from here. Evil grows and walks in darkness. Few are those who know it. Few are the ones who will find it. The shadow that walks among you. It's called schism, division. He who defends the wicked and beats the righteous. He neither sees nor hears. The proud man who calls himself a saint. In the blindness of his pride. He'll be the first to fall in battle. The elder, who understands the word, warns. The wise young man denounces. Both will not fail to fall. From the blow of the instigator. The words of the free unite. With the words of those under the yoke of rules. For both will be tormented. By the same evil arising from the abyss. The herd will be dispersed. The shepherd will be isolated. Not even the most faithful will be, in this destruction, spared. The heart of the good will be confused. The heart of the wicked will rejoice. The madness of gold will take its place, and the child of error will freely walk. Sorrow and fury will come, as never seen before many. Will wish to die, will wish not to see. What is coming upon them? The staff is on the floor. The king's house is empty. For the Lord of Truth who dwelt there has now no place to camp there. Like the empty attic, such is the Father's heart. So follow the advice of the wicked, and you will not know where you're going anymore. All this will be cause for the wrath of the one who judges, and the gates of Hades will open, putting holy souls on the run. But I called by name, 
the children of this time. They will be like a beacon in the dark of night, and a breath of fresh air for every soul. They will have to ally with the militias on high, and forge their souls without minding weariness. For these are the stones of him who plows the mountains, the strength that will defeat the deceiver. The moon will be full, and that week the eyes shall not sleep, for after the fall of evil, a vigil shall arise. Those who were called will have to summon their own, for in the coming time of darkness, their children will keep watch with them. Fake tears will fall, and the funeral procession will hide the joy of those present. But this joy will be turned into greater grief, if centuries are absent. He who reads the words of this prophecy well, has understood already, the kind of evil that is to come, and the wretched evil that has already happened. You must be ready, for darkness that will arise and you must become strong sentinels, so that other worse evil cannot come. The prophecy heard will bring peace. The rejection of it will call doom upon the ignorant. The one who says this prophecy knows the meaning of the signs. He tells the truth and hopes his brother will understand as light goes through glass. The light will come. Evil will be defeated. The children of this time will ask themselves, After all, wasn't this our real mission? Since when was darkness greater than light? Don't be fooled by the snares of the seducer. The time has come and it has begun. The times of pain and fury. Only the one who opens his eyes will pass through the eye of the needle. The Lord has already prepared the ordeal of our time and the land shaped like a shoe will know the force of the storm and the wind. But the tree that withstands the storm becomes strong and invincible. He who heard the prophecy and understood it, he will have a tender heart again. And you prophet, prepare your soul for suffering and pain. You will be mistreated and persecuted because you said everything with fervor. After three times and a quarter of a time, your peace will come. You will be remembered as a prophet, even if some today consider you a mere boy. Close the book and rest. Hold fast in living hope of the one who tells you these words. Don't lose confidence. Amen, amen. Note, there are many possible interpretations of this text. In this case, I will leave it to the reader to draw their own conclusions, because, for me, until today, this has been the most complex phenomenon I have ever experienced. July 1st, 2016, The Vision of the Gates of Hell During the night I awoke suddenly and, as if in a fright, had a vision. I was sitting on my bed, then it was like being somewhere else. I can't exactly tell whether it was a dream or a vision, because in the end I found myself lying down again. I was in front of a huge iron gate. The gate was very high, like a ten-story building. I could hear, coming from behind that gate, many screams and strange sounds, like a crowd of people fighting and screaming in despair. It was embedded in a gigantic wall, which extended far to the right and left. I couldn't see its boundary, for not only was it very wide, it was also quite dark. This wall was not built with cut and polished rocks but they were more like a huge mountain made of rough stones. There were some large, loose rocks near the entrance to the gate. Suddenly, one of those stones was taking the form of a grotesque creature. I will try to explain, think of a hairless cat the size of a man, with grayish-green skin with many wounds, deformed legs and arms, a human face with holes for eyes. That being, certainly a demon, stood up and looked in my direction. He came walking up to me, I felt very scared. Then he spoke. Demon, I will bring you here. Thou shall not escape. There are many like you in here. Me, what are you telling me? What place is this? Demon, this place is ours. And we'll do anything to drag you in here. Me, you can try to do whatever you want. My God and your Lord is the one who knows all things. Then the demon began to laugh and mock 
insulting me with various curses as a slave to the woman, cursed, worm, etc. Demon, do you think you can dominate us? Me, no, I can't, but God willing, he can deliver me. You can try to bring me here, and if God allows it, it's because I deserve it. But even if you bring me here, you can no longer drag with you those whom the Lord has already saved and will save through my ministry. It's not me who does it, it's all the work of the Lord. He was very enraged and came against me. Many other rocks also transformed into these beings and surrounded me from all sides. I thought it would be torn apart. However, just before they touched me, they looked in amazement behind me and backed away in great fear. I turned around and saw that, next to and on top of a larger rock, there was a huge angel with more than three or four meters in height. He was dressed in dark blue robes, with a hood over his head, very large and dark wings, a scythe in his hands and a fair and very handsome face. His eyes were clear and his demeanor irradiated a peace I can't describe. I looked towards the demons and they were all down, as if trying to protect themselves. I turned back to the angel and asked who he was. He didn't say anything, he just showed me that huge sickle, and on it appeared the numbers 33 plus 12 written on it, like a glowing fire. I didn't understand. Then he raised the side towards me and I saw nine people lit up around me. I couldn't make out their faces as they seemed to be of pure light. The nine people around me held hands and disappeared. A sort of luminous ring formed around me. Another luminous person appeared on my right side. He touched my shoulder with one hand and with the other he touched the glowing ring. At that moment, the ring's light seemed to increase greatly, and the demons all fled and turned to stone again. I also started to emit light, and I was looking at my hands. Then everyone disappeared and I was left alone with the angel. He smiled at me, pointed again at the scythe with the numbers written on it, and disappeared. Then I woke up from that state, I was in my bed again. I took the Bible, opened it, and read Ecclesiasticus 14.11. Quote inserted by translator. My son, if thou have anything, do good to thyself, and offer to God worthy offerings. Remember that death is not slow, and that the covenant of hell hath been shown to thee, for the covenant of this world shall surely die. Do good to thy friend before thou die, and according to thy ability, stretching out thy hand give to the poor. Defraud not thyself of the good day, and let not the part of a good gift overpass thee. Shalt thou not leave to others to divide by lot thy sorrows and labors? Ecclesiasticus 14 colon 11 dash 15 do Interpretation I think that the Lord, in his infinite mercy, wanted to show me the hatred that hell has for priests. It also seemed to me to be a warning that the coming years would be difficult years for priests. I was 33 years old at the time, I think 33 plus 12 is the next 12 years, or the time it would take until I was 45, that is, 2029. Another intuition I had about the nine enlightened people might be the need that priests have to ally themselves with the holy angels who make up nine choirs, and their guardian angel, who would be the tenth person inside the circle that touched my shoulder in these years of spiritual combat. The angel in the dark robes, in my opinion, was the angel of the end times. The scythe, before a sign of death, is a sign of harvest, therefore, the end of a period, which makes me think of a time of combat until 2029. This is my personal interpretation. July 28th 2017. The Vision of the Blood Entering the Church It was a Friday afternoon, around 3 p.m. I was at church getting things ready to start a couple's retreat. Suddenly I began to hear, through interlocution, someone saying repeatedly, September 23rd, sometimes shouting, sometimes talking, but always with an expression of haste. I didn't see anything, I just heard. I started to think about a number of things, because September 23rd is the birthday of a close relative of mine, it is also St. Padre Pio's day, and the day of my consecration to the Holy Angel. However, nothing seemed to have anything to do with what he was hearing. I asked aloud a few times if it was about my relative, about St. Padre Pio or about my Holy Angel, but the voice kept saying only, September 23rd. 
Then I felt a sudden urge to look back. I turned my gaze to the church door, and then I had a vision. It was in exactly the same place, but everything was very dark. Through the windows I could see a lot of lightning and thunder outside, like a very strong storm. Then, dark liquid began to trickle through the front windows and under the front door of the church. It covered the floor, through the central aisle and over the benches until it reached my feet. When it arrived, I could see more clearly that it was blood. As soon as the blood touched my feet, the vision ceased. I was never clear about the meaning of this vision. February 11, 2020, Vision of the Popes It was night and I went to celebrate the Mass on the day of Our Lady of Lourdes at the home of a family that I love very much. They have a little oratory there. During the consecration, while adoring Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, I had a vision. The vision was like an image coming out of the Eucharist itself. There were four sharp images. First, I saw Pope Francis getting on a plane, waving to the people and smiling. The second image was that of Red Square in Russia. I saw St. Basil's Cathedral, and then I saw something similar to two stars colliding and a big explosion in the sky. The third image was the wake of the Pope Emeritus. There were few people around him and a lot of sadness. The fourth image was of Pope Francis, walking alone through the streets of Rome. The street's appearance was like a post-war setting. He made his way to St. Peter's Square, but as he got closer, iron bars were raised in front of him. The bars were like those on ancient gates, and the iron was glowing. He tried to approach the square, but was unable to get through the bars. September 23, 2018, The Angel's Warning Every year I do a spiritual retreat by myself. On the last day of the 2018 retreat, I tried to prepare my life project for 2019. When I started writing, I thought, I think I should do a longer project. At that moment, I actually had a vision. An angel was besides me. He was tall, had reddish hair, a blue belt, and a white robe. He looked at me, smiled, and said, In ten years, be ready. I was in a state of astonishment, but I felt a peace and a joy that I could not explain. When I went to ask, Ready for what? But the angel had already disappeared. I remember spending days in a state of joy and peace that I couldn't explain either. But since that day, the year 2029 intrigues me. When transcribing this passage here, I realized that the apparition happened on September 23rd, the date I saw blood entering the church. March 12th, 2020, the preview of future years. On this occasion, I woke up in the middle of the night and felt a strong desire to go to the chapel. I looked up from the altar and began to have a vision, the terrestrial globe rotating, with the number of years passing on it, and below I saw a series of images. I took out my spiritual journal and started trying to describe what I was visualizing. When I transcribed the images, I described them as I thought their meaning was. Therefore, I will tell you, first, the images I saw and, later, what I felt they could mean. I saw the number 2020. The first image was that of all the people in the world and everything else paralyzed. I interpreted it like this. The year 2020 will be known as the year that has not passed. People will look at this year as a stagnant year. Then I saw bishops closing the doors of churches and a disappointed crowd watching them from outside. In this crowd, many had a light above their heads and others pointed towards the church. I interpreted. The cowardice of the pastors of the church will not be forgotten. The lay faithful will receive many special graces that will awaken many consciences. Many lay people will make serious denunciations because of the sins of the bishops. I saw the Holy Father sitting at a table with his hands on his head, in anguish and crying. I interpreted, The Holy Father will suffer a lot. He's already suffering. Your greatest suffering will be in your own conscience. From that moment, the globe began to spin and the years passed, and many images of suffering followed. There were so many that I couldn't write. One of them was that of poor people on the streets. I interpreted, this year opens a period of probation. 
The next few years will be one of chaos and difficulties. The end of 2020 will be marked by a lot of economic hardship. I saw the number 2021 and then the flags of China, the US, France and Germany being flung up, like by a football crowd. I interpreted. There will be some tension on the world stage and it will involve China, the US, France and Germany. I saw the Pope looking at the Russian flag. I interpreted. The Pope will approach Russia. I don't know if he will go to Russia, but he was looking at the Russian flag with some hope. I saw the flag of China. She suddenly breaks apart, and something like mud starts to come out of her. I interpreted. Many hidden things will be revealed in China, or from China. I saw the American flag being burned by a bunch of people dressed in black. I interpreted. The US will be attacked and called the enemy of humanity. The expression, enemies of humanity, came clearly to my mind at that time. I saw many people with guns in their hands and then I saw a rush through the streets. I interpreted, the arms industry will grow and the climate of war will be in full bloom. Then I saw a priest with a red flag being thrown out of a church by lay people. The church was similar to one I know, just like the one in downtown in the city where I live. Because of the similarity, I think this part refers to Brazil. I interpreted. In Brazil, in 2021, the communism infiltrated in the church will be exposed. I thought I would have no more doubts about it. Then I saw many priests and bishops taking off their priestly clothes. At this moment I felt great sadness. I interpreted. A great apostasy, or scandal, or heresy, will be seen or revealed. Then I saw a window being opened and then there was a very big lull. During this lull, I saw people getting ready for something, stocking up on food. I interpreted. A window, period, of peace will arrive between 2021 and 2022 as the globe turned, but that peace will be like a false peace, for a short time. I think it's a period of preparation. I saw the numbers 2021 and 2022 and, just below, military personnel gathering but they were as if they were in hiding, in a secret meeting. I interpreted. In this period, I believe that the first conflicts will start, but the world will not know, it will not be public. I don't know why, but I have the feeling that this image is quite metaphorical. This is a conflict that will not be seen openly. Then I saw a great fire in the upper part of the terrestrial globe. I asked myself, will there be any catastrophe in the Northern Hemisphere? Then I saw the president of Russia pointing at the globe and chuckling. I interpreted. Russia will show her malice. Something will happen that will confirm a position of the president of Russia. His expression was like the one when you say, I told you. I warned. I saw Pope Benedict XVI being prepared for burial. I asked myself, will the Pope Emeritus go to the father's house in 2022? Then I saw Pope Francis very hesitant to sign any document. He looked at the map, on which only the West appeared, Europe, America, Africa, and hesitated to sign the document. I interpreted, the Holy Father will have to make some very important decision that could change the course of the West. Then I saw the Brazilian flag smeared with blood or red paint. The Virgin Mary appeared, took the flag and shook it, brushing the dirt off the flag. I interpreted. In Brazil, there will be a violent period, or a great onslaught of communism, but the Virgin will come to the country's rescue. The globe continued to spin and I saw the numbers 2022 and 2023. Then I saw huge battalions marching, but the strange thing was that there was a very big silence. As in the image of the military meeting, I again felt that feeling that something was not quite that. I asked myself, Will there be the beginning of a war? Will she be silent? It was again the sense of a conflict that will not be felt or seen or heard. Here it was very difficult to understand. Then I saw the Pope hurrying to a plane. He was accompanied by security and was almost running. I didn't see the Pope's face. I felt the Pope will need to leave Rome for some urgent reason. At that moment, the globe spun and I saw the numbers 2023 and 2024. Then I saw only war. 
I saw people watching war scenes on television. I asked myself, will the world see the horrors of war in 2024? Will this appear on televisions? Or will it be a conflict that we will only watch, not being exactly physical? The certainty of a conflict seemed clear to me, but the nature of it was not. Then there was a chronological jump. On the globe, I saw the numbers from 2024 to 2029 flash by, and a great light appeared in the sky. I interpreted, there will be conflicts or problems until 2029. In that year, there will be some sign in the sky. Then I saw the Japanese flag being raised and people were applauding it. I interpreted, Japan will do something that will not be forgotten. The country will do something that will be applauded. Then the globe stopped in 2029 and I saw many people looking at the sky. I interpreted, in 2029, the world will look to the sky and the conflicts and wars on earth will have to stop. After that, I didn't see anything else. It calls my attention that, again, the year 2029 appeared as the end or closure of something. May 12, 2020, the interlocution during a retreat. During one of the moments in the desert, during the priest's retreat, I received a very strong interior locution. I was silent, meditating, when I felt the urge to pick up my spiritual journal and start writing down the insights I'd been having for a few months. I looked at the image of Our Lady of Fatima and felt as if she was telling me what to write. Here's what I wrote in the diary. The warning approaches. The days of trial are on the horizon, like a coming storm. It is already possible to see on the horizon the heavy clouds and the storm lights. The sound of thunder can already be heard. The sign of my Lord will be great. The world will be amazed at his power. But shortly after he gives the sign, science, in the service of the powerful, will convince many that it is a natural phenomenon, or something that does not need divine intervention to happen. The children of light, however, will know that it is a sign for them to walk to the refuges. A cross on the foreheads of the children of light will be the mark. The forehead of a child of light will have that luminous cross that only a few will be able to see. Evil is so cunning and malicious that many, in many places in the world, will receive the mark of the beast without knowing it. Others will flee so as not to receive the mark. Still others will receive the mark in order to help the children of light. Because, in the future, those who do not have this brand will not be able to buy or sell. Then some, spiritual martyrs, will offer their bodies in order to help the children of light. These will suffer greatly, become sick and confused. The Lord, however, will send his angels to help these poor sufferers. The refuges will be protected by angels of great power, and communication will return to being spiritual. The Lord will not forsake the children of light. Angels will bring holy communion to many who will take refuge in their homes. Priests who are totally surrendered to their Lord will be bilocated or mysteriously transported to different places in order to attend to the children of light. Some priests will die of exhaustion, but that will be a great honor for them. Just before the trial, the Lord will warn many priests and consecrated persons. People will see a flame before their eyes. They must follow this flame, because it is the Holy Spirit. Who will be indicating a refuge. Follow that flame. The person who has the flame on top of his head, and not in front of him, is because he is already in a refuge. They will see again the wonders that the apostles once experienced. Many souls all over the world are being warned of these things. There will be a veritable crowd, an army formed and led by Our Lady. She will personally warn many around the world just before all those events happen. Our Lady, our Heavenly Mother, will be the Great General and, together with her, children, she will march to the final battle. Before this battle, however, the world will see the battle, as if it was, from the chair of Peter. The devil knows that hell will never defeat the church, that's why he wants Peter's throne so badly. The war for the Petrine chair has already begun. This war is the prelude to the Queen's battle. February 26, 2022 Intuition about war. Before Mass, the scene of a future war that I had visualized in March 2020 came to my mind. 
I had a very strong intuition to ask God if what I had seen about 2023 regarding war would happen. The answer came when I went to church. I was celebrating Mass versus Theum, with my back to the congregation. We were seven people, counting me, at 10 p.m., as we were on vigil. As I lifted the chalice, I could see in reflection the back of the church. Through the windows, I saw flashes of bursts of light. The door was closed. The darkness outside the church was remarkable, and the lights that showed through the windows had the appearance of a strong storm. It was a war scene outside. During the prayer after Mass, I asked God again if there would be war in 2023. The answer was, The war has already started in 2020. It is just veiled, hidden. The situation is not and will not be worse because my mother intervened. So live with joy and hope each day this year, for from next year you will see what I showed you. The places of worship and deep devotion will better withstand this time, for my angels will be in battle array, guarding such places, 